If n is a positive integer and k equals 5.1 times 10 to the n, what is the value of k? So we know a fair bit about k already. What we don't know is the size of n, which is to say how many zeros it will have after it. So k could be 51, it could be 510, it could be 5100, it could be 51. Thousand, it could be 510,000, etc. We don't know how many digits there are going to be total. We don't know how many zeros there are going to be after the 5 and the 1. That's what, that's what the n is determining. So let's look at the statement. Statement number 1 tells us that k is greater than 6,000 and less than 500,000. Well, that's a huge range. And normally, that, that would be the kind of statement that would tell us just about nothing. Except it's very interesting in this process here, if we think about these values listed, 510, 5100, 51,000, 500, and 10,000. Well, if it's greater than 6,000, then it has to be greater than all of these, including greater than 5100. So it can't be any of those. If it's less than 500,000, well, then it can't be 510,000 or anything greater than that. And that leaves us only one value. So believe it or not, even though this is a, a quite wide inequality, it does allow us to narrow down k to a single value. So this statement by itself is sufficient. Now, ignore statement number one, focus purely on statement number two. Statement number two tells us k squared is 2.601 times 10 to the ninth. Well, once we know the value of k squared, all we'd have to do is take the square root of both sides, and we'd have k. That's the easiest thing in the world to do. So, of course, we're not going to do that calculation here. This is data sufficiency. All we have to know is that we could do that calculation. We could take a square root. That would give us the exact value of k. And so this statement by itself is completely sufficient for finding k. Statement number one is sufficient. Statement number two is sufficient. Answer choice D.